Today we're going to look at how to back up your favorite Game Boy Advance games using a few different methods. Alright, so first method we're going to cover today is by using Game Boy Interface by Extrems, and that is available at GC Forever's forums here. There'll be a link in the description below as always. So just scroll down to the bottom, well, too far, um, and just hit the download button, well, the download link right here, and it'll download for you. So for this method, you are going to need a GameCube to SD card adapter. You can find them on eBay for very cheap. Um, and I'm just going to be using the memory card I used for my uh, soft modded Wii U and Wii. So go ahead and get GBI extracted. Open that up and you can see there's a lot of stuff in here. So these are all the dull files. It just expects you to put this like on the root of your SD card. Um, so you're going to want to make sure that these are in the root of your SD card. Otherwise, you're not going to be able to do this method. So go ahead and open up your SD card for storage. Copy the GBI file to the root of your SD card. And then I'm just going to put the rest of it into a... Uh, New folder in the apps folder just to keep it clean looking called GBI. And you can go ahead and copy all of them. You're only going to really need the GBI.dull. Um, so I'm just going to copy all of them. So, and there you go. You're all set to uh, start dumping GBA games with uh, the Game Boy interface and a Game Boy player on your GameCube. So here's my. GameCube memory card to SD adapter, so I'm just going to go ahead and get this plugged into slot B and we're going to put the memory card into this adapter and there we go. Alright, and also make sure that there is nothing inserted into your Game Boy Player, nothing in the link port, nothing in the ca uh, cartridge port, and then you're going to need some way to boot homebrew on your GameCube, so I have a Xeno GC chip inside mine, so I have this boot disk that has Swiss on it, so go ahead and get your cube turned on, and once you're booted up, I'm greeted with the Swiss menu because that's the disc I had in. So I'm just going to scroll down to apps, GBI, and launch the GBI dull file. So just go ahead and press start to skip this stuff. And you should be greeted by this wonderful uh, GBA BIOS screen. And it'll bring you to this screen if there is nothing inserted. So from here, you are able to dump ROMs, dump a BIOS. Um, Dump the save files, restore save files, a bunch of cool stuff. So first thing you're going to do is dump BIOS if you want to do emulation. Um, and then we're going to go ahead and dump a ROM. So go ahead and put the game you want to dump inside your Game Boy Player. And press A to start dumping the ROM file. And this will take quite a while. So yeah, yeah, it's slow. So we're doing Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 2. And uh, I just went ahead and sped this up right here. So it takes uh it takes a good five six minutes uh using this method for an eight megabyte cartridge so not the slowest method that i'm going to show you today but definitely not the fastest either so once your roms are finished dumping they are stored um on the root of your sd card so you're just going to be able to plug your sd card into your computer and just pull them right off of the root right there no folder navigation required And dump um, complete. So I'm also going to dump the save off of a Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 2 card just so I can show you that um, the functionality of the save backups here. So I'm going to go ahead and dump the save. And once that's all written, go ahead and hit the reset button so that way you can ensure that the files uh, close and are ready to use. Second method I'm going to show you all today is using a GBA link cable to GameCube adapter. So the great thing about this method is that it is probably the most accessible. Unfortunately, it's also the slowest method, but it doesn't require you to have a Game Boy player. All you need is a GBA, GBA to GameCube link cable, and then a GameCube or Wii. You're going to go ahead and grab the GBA uh, link cable dumper um, by Fix94 um, from right here from his GitHub. Um, post the link in the description as well. And once you have that downloaded, we're going to hit, go ahead and get that extracted as well. And as you can see, there are two uh, dull files here. One's for GameCube, so if you have a homebrewed GameCube like I do, you could use that one, or if you're going to be using the Wii. 
So we're going to be using the GameCube for this example. So I'm going to put my SD card back into the computer. And we're going to go into the app folder. And then just create a new folder. You can call it whatever you want. I'm just going to name mine GBA Dumper. And I'm going to go ahead and copy over the Weedle. And you want to rename it boot.dull so it gets picked up by the uh, homebrew browser as well. So there we go. Now as far as setup goes, you're obviously going to need to put your SD card back into your Wii so you can actually run the program. Um, yeah, shocker. Um, but you're going to need a GameCube controller attached to port 1, like so. And then you are going to need uh, to get the GBA to GameCube adapter and we're gonna get this guy plugged into port 2 and now we just need to plug the other end into our Game Boy Advanced so I'm gonna show you just hooking it up to a GBA SP but for the video I'm actually using this hooked up to a Game Boy player so if you load uh, GBI up on the Game Boy player with the link cable plugged in it won't take you to that dump menu it'll actually just wait for you to um, run a GBA link cable application but after you get everything hooked up, just turn on the Game Boy um, without any games attached to it, and you'll just be greeted with this uh, BIOS screen, and that means that it is good to go. Now over on the Wii, we're going to launch the GBA Link Cable Dumper program um, from the Homebrew channel, so just go ahead and scroll down and select that. And once it gets loaded, it's going to be looking for the Game Boy Advance in port 2, so give it a second for it to detect it, or if you haven't plugged it in, now is a good time to do that. And once it's detected, it'll send uh, basically the program that it uses to dump the games with. So just give it a second to let it finish. And you should be greeted with a screen that looks like this over on your Game Boy Advance. So once you have that, you're able to either dump the BIOS, um, put in a game. Uh, so it doesn't take very long to dump the BIOS again. Just doing it again, just because we can just because I want to show you guys, but once you uh, once you have the game you want inserted, you just go ahead and press A, and it takes it a second to uh, detect what game it is. So as you can see, there's a bunch of options available again, just like on GBI, you can dump saves, restore saves, you can even delete saves with this one, which is kind of cool. Um, so we're just going to go ahead and press A to start dumping the game. And again, this is the slowest method, so... It tells you it'll take about 12 minutes. I think it took about 14 for me to dump uh, Link to the Past, but it really wasn't um, the worst. I went and just got something to drink, came back up, and it was good to go. So I went ahead and sped up the video again, but we're just going to go ahead and uh, cut to the end here. Finally, it is time to start talking about our last method of dumping GBA games, and this is by far the fastest method of doing it, and it's probably the most cost effective for most people as well, because all it requires you to have is an original DS or DS Lite with a Game Boy Advance slot, and a DS flash cart, which can be had for roughly $20, um, at least here in the US, I'm not sure how shipping worldwide is for some folks, but most people have those already. So, very easy. All you need to do is download the GBA Backup Tool. Uh, once again, as always, link in the description. And all you need to do is download it. Tell it to start downloading. There we go. And as before, just go ahead and get that extracted. And you see we have a GBA Backup Tool folder. So, go ahead and get the SD card from your DS flash cart. Get that inserted into the computer, and then I'm just going to go ahead and copy straight over the GBA backup tool to the root of my SD card, and we're good to go. Now for this example, I'm going to back up Pokemon Fire Red. This is the biggest uh, game backup I've shown you guys yet. This one is 16 megabytes instead of the 8 megabytes that Tony Hawk and A Link to the Past were. So get the game inserted into your DS Lite, go ahead and get it turned on, um, launch your flash cart. And depending on your flash cart, like um, how file browsers work, um, you just need to get to the program you installed. So on mine, it's just usually at the very bottom for these backup tools in Homebrew. So uh, you're going to be greeted with this screen. So if you have your game inserted, press A, and it'll give you the information about the game. So now we're going to press R 
to scroll between functions. So there's save backup, save restore, and ROM backup. So go ahead and press B to create a new GBA file and then press A to start the backup. And as you can see, this is so much faster than either of the previous methods I showed you. The game is twice as big, but it is still going the same speed as our sped up uh, Tony Hawk 2 backup on the GBI version. It's just much quicker to use a DS Lite or a DS to back up your GBA games. So this is the method that I wholeheartedly recommend doing. It's pretty accessible. Most people have uh, DS Lights. Most people have DS flash carts. If you don't, they're probably going to be cheaper than going out and buying a GameCube or a Game Boy player. So honestly, this is the method I recommend. But all three are very viable. All three provide great backup options. Uh, so whatever method that you have access to, don't don't be afraid to use it. And there you have it. Three different methods on how to back up your favorite Game Boy Advance games and saves. So thank you all so much again for watching this video. Hope you have uh, good luck in all your backup adventures. And thanks again. Can't I honestly can't express uh, enough gratitude for the support you guys show me. We are just there on the threshold of 2,000 total follows between all the channels. So thank you all again so much for that. Um, I, again, I don't know what to say other than to express my gratitude. So hope you all have wonderful days, and we will see you all back next video.